in these last days, we are coming into the greatest season to experience the presence of God, and He's releasing His own glory to a higher degree. But there is a blindness over the eyes of the church. There's a spiritual blindness that prophetic. I believe it has to happen in order for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. We are seeing atrocities at a level we haven't seen since Hitler. They're even going beyond that. It has to be the same spirit that controlled it, Adolf Hitler. Nothing is new under the sun. Iran is the Prince of Persia. And the Bible actually speaks about Persia. It says, I'll raise up an army against Babylon who have no regard for women and no regard for infants and babies. Tell me some of the things that you see. I heard the words, beware the sleeper cells of nations are being activated. And then I looked and this army had moved from the mountains of Afghanistan into the mountains of the United States. As goes Israel, so goes the U.S. Holy Spirit, take over this show. This is your platform, and we both yield as much as we humanly can to be spokesmen for what you want said. Tommy, you sent me a, a word that God showed you so specific having to do with what's going on in Israel at this moment in history and what is about ready to happen in the future. About three years ago, Sid, the Lord showed me in a vision, and I was actually on your program maybe last year sharing some of these things, some a nine years left prophecy. Tell them you have nine years left, and nine years will feel like nine months, and nine months will feel like nine days, and nine days will feel like nine seconds. And one of the things in the nine years left prophecy was there was gonna be a shaking of Netanyahu from his position. And that he would lose his place in the next, uh, in some kind of election. And I believe God was shaking the heavens and the earth just as he said he would to shake things that none of us ever thought could be shaken. I said, God, when will the shaking stop? And he said, when you are unshakable. He was gonna be reinstated back into his position because that was an intensified Iran on the forefront and Iran was going to be riled up to do something against Israel. So when the Hamas thing happened, the Hamas infiltration, the air, land and sea attack that we saw this year, the Lord told me to unmask Hamas and to reveal and expose the real face hiding behind Hamas and Hezbollah. So I went live on our program and I shared, this is not Hamas. Hamas is the patsy, Hamas is the PR face, Hamas is who they're going to point at saying it is Hamas, this is actually Iran. This is Iran in disguise, and we are going to see newspaper articles coming out that Iran funded and backed this attack. No sooner than 24 hours, I was receiving messages and emails from everybody saying Iran backed the Hamas invasion of Israel and something in me just got stirred up uh, to investigate this with the Lord further as to exactly what is going on and what time we live in. Interesting enough, this morning I read on some news accounts that President Biden assured the public that because he's talked to the people in Iran, that Iran is not involved. It shows me that uh, you can't believe what you hear on the news. That's what right. it tells me. Right. And one of the things that was so compelling to me in the video that I shared was that we're going to see Biden try to cover his tracks because of a funding of Iran's nuclear program and a funding of money that was underhandedly given. And, you know, one of the amazing things again that came out was that $6 billion have been sent frozen uh, in a frozen, somewhat frozen account but that was released to Iran uh, for humanitarian aid. But then videos leaked showed later on in some news articles that some of that funding was being used, like piping was being used to recreate bomb technology and different things like that. So it's clear that something is going on between America and Iran that America under this administration doesn't want the world to know about. I don't even have words to articulate this. We are seeing atrocities at a level we haven't seen since Hitler. Uh, and frankly, they're even going beyond that. Uh, 
It has to be the same spirit that controlled it. Adolf Hitler is controlling Hamas and Hezbollah and the terrorist groups of the, throughout the world. I mean, we've seen this in scripture. Nothing is new under the sun. Iran is the Prince of Persia. It's the same principality that manifested in Daniel's day. And when Persia came, according to accounts, Persia came under Cyrus to destroy Babylon. And the Bible actually speaks about Persia. It says, I'll raise up an army against Babylon who have no regard for women and no regard for infants and babies. And you're seeing this same spirit erupt again, this Prince of Persia that is has no regard for women. It says actually in Isaiah's prophecy against Persia, it says they'll rape women and they'll, they'll kill babies, infants. We see that same principality of Persia manifesting itself again, rearing its ugly head in that attack where we saw babies beheaded, we saw so many things happening. But what's so painful to me is the blindness on the West and the blindness on the church as well to see this plight that's happening to our Jewish brothers. There's an ugly replacement theology that has gone around the world that somehow the Christian church is a new shoot by itself. And, you know, Sid, the Bible actually calls people like me the wild olive branch. We're the wild ones. We're the ones that were engrafted into the existing faith. We're not the replacement, you know, and so it's just sad to see that. If there is such a blindness. Now, the Bible talks about a blindness over the eyes of Jewish people to see uh. Jesus. But there is just so much blindness on the on the church today. I don't know if you saw this account, uh, but I saw some of these pro-Palestinian rallies in the United States, and I saw the most beautiful Muslim young kids, and they actually said all these atrocities that the press is reporting, every one of them are lies. They believe yeah. it. That's in Hitler's day, he said, if you tell a lie long enough, people will believe it. And that's what happened in Hitler's Germany. You know, there are over 50 Muslim states. There are over 22 Islamic countries, but there's only one Israeli state. There's only one state. And so to call Israel the occupiers, if they only have one Jewish state, it's sad to see. There's a, there's a spiritual blindness there that I believe is prophetic. I believe it has to happen. Unfortunately, it's a sad plight. But in order for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled, part of that has to take place. Now, am I saying that we are in the end times? I believe we've been in the end times for a long time. But the contractions are getting fewer and further in between in terms of world atrocities. And there's so many prophetic things that I'm seeing in the spirit that is happening right now all surrounding that one strip of land. Tell me some of the things that you see. Well, this morning I had a really fresh vision from the Lord. It was so clear. I was waking up at 2 a.m. and again at 6 a.m. and I said to the Lord, what's, what's on your heart? What are you, what, what, what? I was just asking generally and the Lord was weeping. I felt him weeping over Jerusalem. And you know, that scripture came to mind, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if I should forget thee, let my right hand lose its cunning. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of its mouth. There was such a, a dry mouth weeping and lamentation over Jerusalem. Uh, but I saw uh, the Lord then transition me in this vision, and he was on the mountains of Afghanistan. And in this vision, he had binoculars in his hand. He was scouting a ready mountain Afghani army that were an offensive. And then I looked in and this army had moved from the mountains of Afghanistan into the mountains of the United States. I saw Australia. I saw different parts of America very clearly. It was so clear that the Lord was just lifting them off this morning to me one by one. And the Spirit of God said that this was going to move from being a conversation about Hezbollah, Hamas, and you're going to see Al-Qaeda and Afghanistan getting involved. People were going to blame President Biden for the terrible atrocities of fleeing Afghanistan at that time. I heard the words, beware the sleeper cells of nations are being activated. Be on alert, 911. And it was Psalm 91 verse 1, because your enemy has come to exact vengeance on the nation. And it was not just, now it wasn't just Hamas, Hezbollah, it was Al-Qaeda, it was Afghanistan. And we were talking about an already, people were talking about an already defeated enemy raising its head again, but it was always there 
it was just sleeping in the different nations. I saw very specific attacks in very specific places. I saw attacks in parts of New York, praying for this morning Manhattan, I was praying for uh, um, Arizona, I was praying for London, North London, I was praying for Chicago. And I saw them say, we cannot drop bombs on them, we have no planes, but we are the bombs and we can drop inside of them. And I saw places, I'm from London, so I saw, I was now standing in the London Met in Scotland Yard, and they were developing strategies to uncover hidden cells, uh, hidden bomb-making units throughout London through listening to web chatter, but it wasn't enough because there was no more communication through mainstream applications. I saw apps that were created that were encrypted on both ends and it became the duty of these people in the Scotland Yard and London Met to infiltrate these new applications and the Lord said that this will have a double-edged effect just like we saw in the US the creation of the um, TSA he said this will accelerate not only the attacks upon America and the West but it will accelerate the death of privacy. I saw a new war being fought on privacy. What, what can we give away? What can we withhold? And then I saw a rising in 2024, a decade, the war called it the decade of the boundary wars. And these wars were being fought by proxy, by militia, but they were being fought by the face of different countries. And they were fighting over territory. It wasn't just in the Middle East anymore. It was now China and the South China Sea. It was Russia and Ukraine, which wasn't gonna go away anytime soon. But everybody was fighting their own boundary wars. I saw India fighting its boundary wars. I saw different nations contesting for boundary and territory and reclaiming lost territory. And I asked the Lord what he's doing, and the Lord said, I am resetting the boundary lines of nations again across this decade. And people were fighting land, sea, and air wars over boundaries. And then interestingly, I saw the former president or prime minister, Ahmadinejad, and he was hiding behind a curtain as if to say he had taken on some kind of godfather role that there was a stirring up of, of something with him. And I saw a reignition of an Afghani uh, poppy trade that was going to be utilized to fund back channel uh, uh, projects to raise millions for terror war. And all of this came in a, in, in a flash from about 2 and 6 a.m. I want to take you back to some visions that you sent me about what you believe God's revealed to you is going to happen on this war going on in Israel right now. You actually, now, now Netanyahu says he's going to wipe Hamas off the face of the map, but you yeah. saw it starting and stopping a number of times. Explain what you saw. I saw nations calling for terms of peace at least three times, and at least three times it backfired. They called it ceasefire. Call ceasefire. And I saw it, it looking like ceasefire was imminent, then war started again. Call a ceasefire, ceasefire, then war started again. And each time it started again, it escalated because somebody wasn't keeping the terms of the ceasefire. But I saw the Lord's hand involved in this because there was an acceleration of something that was happening for Israel to reclaim its territory. But I also saw that the enemy was going to use this to turn the tide. And where people were saying, I'm, I'm pro-Israel, all of a sudden nations became pro-Palestine. And of course, we've already begun to see some of this with the marches in London, marches around the world where millions are, are rallying together. But it was like this was a catalyst to expose the hidden sleeper cells within the nations. Where does Isaiah 60 fit into this whole horrific outline that you have just outlined the plan of Satan, which we should be praying against, uh, and that's the purpose of hearing prophecies that are negative, but where does Isaiah 60 fit into this equation? What has God shown you about what is called in the scriptures the greater glory? I actually believe, and I know you believe this, that the greater glory cannot come without 
the recognition of our Jewish brothers and sisters in the Christian faith. I believe that when that synergy happens, and it's not going to happen among the masses, I believe it's going to begin among the remnant. When that synergy takes place, Apostle Paul calls it resurrection from the dead. There's going to be a power and a glory that is released that's called the latter glory. And, you know, what's it going to look like? Well, if God says I'm doing a new thing, I don't think it's going to be on any of our grid what new means. But one of the things I realize is this. A lot of people think we're going to go through war and then we're going to see the glory after the war. I actually believe we're going to see the glory in the midst of the war. I believe that we're going to see a rise of the Kari Ten Boon anointing that in the midst of tribulation and trial, there's going to be great glory, great rescue, great outpouring. I believe we're going to see God on the battlefield again. I believe we're going to see a release. I actually had a vision, and in this vision, I saw the Lord. And, you know, I know prophets have these airy-fairy visions, so I'm going to try and cement this in some element of reality. But I saw the Lord standing on the edge of a cliff of heaven with angel Michael by his side. And we know that Michael is the archangel for Israel. And I really saw him standing there ready for battle, ready for battle, but he didn't engage. And I asked the Lord, why aren't you engaging? And the Lord said, because I'm waiting for my ecclesia to declare the war. And it wasn't the war for uh, uh, just a natural battle. It was for us to move from treating Israel like a political thing to treating it like a prophetic thing that this is a time where the Lord says, arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is now risen upon you. But look where the ships are coming from. They're not coming from America. They're not coming from, from uh, Europe. The Bible says they're coming from the Middle East. All of these countries where the glory is coming from, in Isaiah 60, it talks about the Middle East. We're so American-centric when it comes to reading the Bible that I believe actually God is setting the stage uh, the Bible says the Lord comes from Taman. You, you read all these scriptures and you realize that the glory is coming from the East and is coming here and across the world as we begin to partner like Daniel and align with scripture, not with our feelings, not with our political party, with scripture and pray through prophecies like he did the book of Jeremiah until they come to pass. Those that are viewing right now, I personally believe, and I believe Tommy does too, that we are coming into rough times. I'm not an ostrich. I don't have my head buried in the sand. But we're coming into the greatest season for believers to, to experience the presence of God and act uh, like Jesus said we would. Jesus said we will do the same works he has done and even greater because that greater glory is going to be on us. But it's only going to be on those that are totally forgiven of sin, totally know that they're the righteousness of God and Messiah Jesus, totally know they're loved, and totally know they're protected until they fulfill their, their destiny in the book of life. And the first step is to say this prayer out loud with me and to mean it to the best of your ability. Out loud, mean it to the best of your ability. I have not said anything you cannot do. Uh, if for some reason you can't speak out loud, God will understand you doing it on the inside. But repeat after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. Against you and you alone have I sinned. And I'm so sorry. I believe your blood washes away every one of my misdeeds. And you have no remembrance of it anymore. And now that I'm clean, Jesus, come and live inside of me. Thank you for saving me from my sins. I make you Lord of every area of my life. Amen. Tommy, pray for everyone watching, but you know, once I just want to make one statement to kind of cement what Tommy's been saying. Have you ever looked at the spelling of the word Jerusalem. This is the way it's spelled, J-E-R-U-S-A, and then the rest. U-S-A is the center of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is not owned by the Jews, not owned by the Arabs. 
God says this is my land. It's owned by God Almighty. And he gave a lease to the Jewish people. And that I re read it and that settled it. How long is the lease? Forever, a thousand generations and everlasting in Psalm 105. Uh, those are pretty good terms, Toby. And you made the point, we are should not be USA-centric if we want to understand end-time Bible prophecy. We should be Israel-centric, and God will take care of USA. So, Tommy, pray just as press into the Spirit and pray whatever God shows you to pray right now. I believe that there are many of you watching that there's still a wrestle on the inside of your heart with is this, are we su supposed to support Israel or Palestine? What, what, where, where are we right now? The Lord says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. For if it goes well with them, it will go well with you. So Father, we didn't come to you as our husband so that we could have our own opinion about what you said. We surrender to what you say. Salvation belongs to the Jews. So Lord, we are the engrafted branch. So Lord, we thank you that their blindness was for our benefit. But now we ask you that that prodigal son that you love returns back home, that Jerusalem, that Lord, it recognizes the Jewish Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, as its Lord. Father, we pray right now for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray, infiltrate even Palestine, infiltrate even the Arab world. And I see a vision of the Lord opening up a gateway for good, but the enemy is also going to use it as a gateway for bad in Saudi Arabia. I see the Lord building Saudi as a gate to the Arab world and filling its stadiums with the cry of salvation. There is going to be a shift in the nation of Saudi Arabia. In Jesus' name, amen. And by the way, the word amen means so be it. 